Hey guys, I'm Dovin. Today I'm back with more Total War Warhammer 2 online action. Today we're here with the Dark Elves. I've actually got a Supreme Sorceress Lore of Fire leading my army here. We're going to be taking on the Cute Cuddly Skaven. So let's go ahead and take a look at the army compositions. The Fire Sorceress here, Supreme Sorceress that is, uh, now in full combo meal with Cascading Fire Cloak and a side of Flaming Sword of Ruin with Burning Head for the drink. Uh, in terms of the army composition in, for infantry, we've got two Sisters of Slaughter with the Blades of the Blood Queen in the center, front line of Dread Spears, three of them, one of which is the Hellebronies here with their beautiful pink gradient uniforms, two units of Black Art Corsairs, and two Reaper Bolt Throwers with a few chevrons for extra accuracy and reload. We've also got two Doomfire Warlocks sitting in the woods here. And that's pretty much it for my build. For my opponent, he's got a unit of Death Runners currently sneaking their way over. They actually just got discovered. Oh, I forgot I do have some, some Dark Riders in the corner as well. Uh, my opponent's got two Gutter Runners with Poison, uh, Clan Rats with Shields, and a Plague Monk Sensor Bear. You don't get to see these guys too often. Uh, they can do some pretty good damage, but uh, I don't like them because they're a little bit squishy for their price, I feel. But let's see how they do here. He's actually got Queek Head Taker and an Assassin with no caster. Typically I don't uh, cast replays with no caster, but as I'm a little bit pressed four times since I'm going out of town, I did want to show this to you guys. Uh, there is some uh, merit to talking about Queek himself as well, so we'll discuss that in just a moment. But uh, he's also got a couple of Poison Wind Globideers, Warp Lightning Cannon, one unit of Storm Vermin with Halberds, a couple of Skaven Slave Spears. And that's pretty much it, so let's kick the battle into full gear. It's uh, very reminiscent of like a patch 1 type Skaven army. Obviously, uh, you would trade uh, Queek out for Skrulk, but uh, uh, just in general, actually, let's talk about that for just a moment. A lot of people say, oh man, Skrulk's so boring, he's the only lord you ever see, I want to see Queek. And there's a reason you don't see Queek, and that's because he's objectively n just not as good. Um, he has anti-infantry armor piercing, decent-ish melee stats, although his melee defense does leave something to be desired. Uh, he does have trophy heads built in, which is not a bad uh, debuff. And Dwarf Gouger gives him a ton of more armor piercing damage, but it's not a wildly, you know, crazy buff for your whole army or anything like that. The reason why you see Skrulk more often is because he can also do a ton of single target damage with Libra Bubonicus. And it's also not as reliant on getting a good engagement because it's a spell, or it's not technically a spell, but it's an ability. You know, you don't have to be in melee for that damage to go off. Now, granted, it is subject to things like magic resistance, so, you know, there is uh, other considerations there as well. But in general, you can still deal very reliable damage with Skrulk. And he also gives you your caster and lord in one, which means you save on cost in that aspect. Currently, in terms of the battle, I'm just moving up my Reaper Bolt Throwers to start counter skirmishing uh, with this Warp Lightning Cannon because uh, that's the reason I brought them is so that we can win an artillery uh, duel. Because the Skaven unit models are quite large, it's quite easy to actually hit the cannons themselves and blow them up, especially with something like a Reaper Bolt Thrower, Eagle Claw Bolt Thrower, that sort of thing. So. Uh, I didn't quite catch it earlier, but those Death Runners did get a quick cycle charge from some of these uh, Doomfire Warlocks. I'm just going to be kind of maneuvering around. I know there's some Ninja Rats lurking out here somewhere, and I also see my opponent's Doom Wheel kind of maneuvering out over here. So we're just going to move up the infantry a little bit here to just uh, make sure we stay honest and protect these artillery pieces. You can see we're already uh, starting to get some work done here. No, Actually, it looks like none of the pieces have gone down yet, but... Uh, yeah, the uh, Warp Lightning Cannons in a situation like this are really going to be cost and efficient. You can see finally one of those pieces going down there and ooh, immediately a second one goes down. So suddenly two-thirds of the damage of that artillery piece is gone. And granted, I have invested 400 more points in my opponent than, arti uh, than my opponent in artillery. But uh, it's paid off. We've taken his artillery down. So now my opponent's going to be forced to advance, which he's doing a little bit piecemeal here. But uh, yeah, you can see over on this side, the Doom Wheel getting a little bit over aggressive here. Going to actually get caught out by the Doomfire Warlocks. And because they do poison, it's going to be pretty hard for the Doom Wheel to escape. We also had its armor sundered there momentarily, at least while it was in the effect of that Soul Blight. But, uh, excuse me, yeah, it's going to be a bad situation for that Doom Wheel. 
And overall, my opponent, uh, despite the fact the balance power is still very even, is already in a little bit of an uphill situation and currently is not really advancing the important parts of his army. I figured I could deal with these Plague Monk Sensor Bearers in melee, so we're currently uh, shooting what's left of the artillery ammo at these Poison Globeteers. I'm really not too worried about the artillery getting taken out at this point. It's pretty much done the job that I intended for it, which is to take out my opponent's artillery. Um, but yeah, we're going to be... Uh, letting the crews get caught up a little bit more than I intended here. We actually just drop the artillery pieces and run back just in case we need to bring them back. But uh, the Death Runners that had tried to get around in the back line are going to be met by Sister of Slaughter. And this is pretty much a worst case scenario for Death Runners. They're very much uh, meant to take on armored infantry and just unarmored uh, kind of. Uh, high attack and high defense infantry like Sisters of Slaughter is going to be a very bad situation. We've got the Black Art Corsairs just kind of screening out these gutter runners here. The Doom Wheels still trying to push through in the back lines here. But uh, yeah, just got the Doomfire Warlocks in tow. We're going to toss a uh, Flaming Sword of Ruin just above the weapon damage here to clear through those clan rats a little bit faster. Uh, meanwhile, the Plague Monk Sensor Bearers are incoming. We're chasing off one of the units of gutter runners and wasting all their ammo on a cheap Dread Spear, which is fine by me. Meanwhile, Death Runners in the back line have been finished off, and the Doom Wheel's just about to shatter as well. So, uh, once the Doom Wheel shatters, that's going to start to tip the balance power even more decisively in my favor. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for, Plague Monk Sensor Bear is going to come on 1v1 here with these. Uh uh, the Sisters of Slaughter. Sisters of Slaughter, despite the fact I gave them a Cascading Fire Cloak, they're actually taking a lot of damage just due to the charge bonus. Uh, sensor Bearers actually have a 37 charge bonus while their Frenzy is active, which is really, really good. But uh, we're going to drop a Burning Head down the line here to do some damage to the Sensor Bearers since, you know, they don't have much armor. And a little bit <laughs> misaimed, actually going to do some friendly fire, no pun intended. And uh, mostly just does damage to the Dread Spears there. So, uh, hey, you know, life of a Druki. Uh, you can't really expect uh, the Supreme Sorceress to be too upset about that result there. But uh, anyway, pushing through in the back line. My opponent still left his Storm Vermin here to protect Warp Lightning Cannons that don't actually have their artillery pieces. So, a little, little bit of a mistake there. And, uh, you know, Skaven Slave Spears... They just aren't going to do much to Doomfire Warlocks. The Doomfire Warlocks can mostly just run them over with impunity because they're so light and they have such poor stats. They really won't do much damage in return to the Doomfire Warlocks, so we're going to be able to just get in here, shut down those Poison Wind Globideers while we finish cleaning up the main line here. You can see Queek's in here fighting. He's got 10 kills, but uh, because my Lord is up in the air, you know, she's not in any danger of getting manhandled by Queek. And uh, Queek himself is going to get wrecked by the Blades of the Blood Queen. They have basically equivalent stats to him. And, you know, there's uh, 75 of them to start. There's currently 66. <laughs> you know, it's just they have anti-infantry AP, so it's going to be bad day for Queek. The uh, charge bonus from the Supreme Sorceress there as well is something to take advantage of when she's up on the Pegasus. She's got that 63 charge bonus which is uh, pretty decent. That's currently being buffed by Murderous Prowess slightly, but uh, still, uh, even a uh, source uh, like uh, Caster Lords, generic Caster Lords, or even someone like uh, Balthazar Gelt or Lariel, if they're up in the air, they have a pretty good charge bonus, and in the right situation, obviously, you want to be very careful about bringing them down into combat, but in the right situation, it can be good. But uh, anyway, well played to my opponent. Hope you guys enjoyed watching that one. Yeah, definitely want to bring a Caster with the Skaven. You need, need, need the clan rat summons i would say in pretty much every matchup just to give you more bodies on the floor because skaven's stats aren't that good at the end of the day if you can have more units to throw at your enemy that's always a good thing so that's why lore of plague is pretty much a must i have seen some people use lore of ruin pretty effectively but generally i would say lore of plague is the way to go and because skrulk's items are just too good to pass up and he gives you your caster and lord in one that's why you'll very often see lord skrulk over Queek Headtaker, which is a little bit unfortunate. Queek's a cool character. Tretch, I think, is more viable than Skrulk in like one or two matchups if you're really trying to avoid getting gooned. Uh, Tretch is kind of the tank lord for this Gaven. He has really good melee defense, no regeneration, but that high melee defense, and he also has a stock mechanic so he can run away if he needs to. Um, or we'll call it a tactical retreat, how about? <laughs> but uh, anyway, in terms of the army breakdown, the uh, bolt throwers did their job of taking down my opponent's artillery. Uh, Doomfire Warlocks helped clean up a lot of the squishy Skaven infantry very effectively. I like them quite a bit in this matchup. Same thing with the Sisters of Slaughter. They're a little bit vulnerable to missile fire, and like if my opponent had really heavily invested on a lot of uh, like Night Runners and Gutter Runners together, 
you guys may have recently seen a Norska uh, video I put out where I used a, a build like that. Something like that I think would have been pretty punishing to this Dark Elf list, although Doomfire Warlocks may have had something to say about that. You know, it's it's always hard to kind of say, but I do think that with the new units the Dark Elves have got, that this matchup, which used to be very even, I think, has swung in the Dark Elves' favor, just because Crone Hellebron, especially on her cart, is super good in this matchup. Uh, with her magic resistance, makes her hard to kill with Warp Lightning Cannons and Libra Bubonicus. She causes terror, does anti-infantry. Uh, you know, the, the Sisters of Slaughter are very good here. The Doomfire Warlocks are very good here. So a lot of the new additions for the Dark Elves are quite good in this particular matchup. So it really makes things an uphill battle for this game, and I think... Uh, I don't know. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. What uh, what kind of build would you take here as the Skaven? And uh, how would you go about countering some of the new tools that the Dark Elves have? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button so every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.